How you doing, riders and antagonists? Welcome to a new chapter of Inside Riders, our new section with all the news from the broken planet. As you can see, today I'm with John. He belongs to the design team of Riders of the Broken Planet, and today he's going to explain all the changes coming to Riders of the Broken Planet. How you doing, John? I'm fine. As you know, the new campaign, Guard of Fury, gets released on November 30. And I would like to ask you, Joan, uh, what is the philosophy behind these changes? Um, what we found in the, uh, the last month or so is that uh, the economy and the progression in Raiders is a bit too binary. Mm -hmm. uh, you're either on the uh, side of people who've bought the campaign and has access to the missions yeah. and all that content, or, or, or you're not. And then you're on the side that has to uh, place just the first mission and so on. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to have here is to make everything in the game a lot more flexible. Yeah. We have to uh, increase flexibility in how people access the missions and gain and, and, and unlock uh, future missions, and also uh, more flexibility on the ways that people can acquire currency and spend, the, uh, spend it on the new weapons, characters and, and the game content. Nice, let's begin then. Uh, the first change is related to the invitations and uh, the possibility to get incentives for inviting someone uh, to the content on Raiders of the Broken Planet. Uh, can you explain them? Yeah, the invitation system uh, was like that. Um, Players who own a campaign can now receive invitations. Mm -hmm. That is a new currency that people will own, and you just have the, the one invitation or two invitations, yeah. and so on. And what you can do with them is that you can gather on a squad, a team, yeah. with a friend, mm -hmm. and play a mission with, with that person. Uh, what you can, if, if, if you have content that that person does not own, yeah. uh, what you can do is you can invite them to that content. So that, that person will now uh, play a mission that, that uh, he has no access to, mm -hmm. and you can play uh, something from the Alien Myths campaign that the, the other player doesn't have access to. Yeah. That means that, that you, non-premium player, has access to all the blueprints that drop in there, and all the content, um, and at the same time, both persons using the invitation uh, will receive uh, a, a currency, uh, a prize for that. So what we're doing here is we're trying to get you to, uh, you want to play with your friends, we want, want to reward you for that. <laughs> if you bring something new to a broken planet and show them the game, we want to uh, reward you for that. So one invitation gets consumed for playing one game and then you get a, re a reward. If the person that you've invited has never been invited before, so he's a new player, to the broken planet, they will receive a reward. You will both receive a, re a reward uh, of Mercury points. If that player has been invited before, so you're friends and you play, you use invitations on each other like from, from, from time to time, you both receive a reward of, uh, in, form, in the form of gold. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, new ways to, to make people to try content, it's always uh, welcome, but we'll have uh, other ways to make the content more, more flexible or to unlock content. Uh, yeah. Can you explain them? Yeah, what we're doing uh, with... Uh, we, the new thing that we're doing is that you can now unlock missions for a period of time using gold. Mm -hmm. That means that uh, people who do not want to buy the campaign or spend money on uh, Mercury points can now use gold to unlock access to a mission. They can play the mission and again, mm -hmm. they'll get the prize, they have access to the blueprints that they can then unlock and, and use uh, wherever in the game. Yeah. And, and, and also they can even, if they own an invitation, like you can um, unlock the mission, invite someone to the mission, you both play on that mission that, that you've only unlocked for a period of time. And, and so you have pretty much the same rights mm -hmm. as, as anyone else uh, to the mission. That means that anyone playing the game right now will be able to uh, see the story of the Protectors, the new World of Fury campaign story, uh, from beginning to end, only using gold. Well, nice. As you know, in Raiders of the Broken Planet, we can lock characters and faction cards with gold. But from now on, we can do it with faction and character points, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. 
uh, what we are, we've been observing lately in the game is that the demand on faction and character points is too low. The economy has, is, is too heavy on the gold demand. And we're switching a couple of things to uh, have the demand be more spread out uh, across all currencies. Mm -hmm. First off, as you will see on the World of Fury patch notes, uh, cards increase in power, are more relevant in the gameplay, and we expect people to uh, look after them and the rare versions of the cards uh, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. With that, we're also, uh, as you said, uh, switching the cost uh, of locking cards uh, from uh, gold to faction and, ra uh, and, and character points. Mm -hmm. uh, that should uh, spread out the economy better, and make sure that the demand is better spread out overall, yeah. Okay, Okay. next point. Uh, we'll have more ways to use or spend our Mercury points. Yeah, that's right. Uh, again, we, what we had is that you could either uh, use Mercury points to get a character or use gold. And uh -huh. you, you either would go full on one way or the other. Yes. Again, what we're trying to do is break down that, break that down so that people have more flexibility and they can use their Mercury points however they want. Mm -hmm. So what we have now is that you can uh, get gold from uh, using Mer use Mercury points to uh, acquire gold, yeah. which will mean that people can use them however they see fit, complement with some uh, gold farming and then unlock the character mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. Nice. Uh, last but not least, the antagonist is going to receive some changes in order to make it more balanced. How? He's going to receive stigmas even if he or she loses, but he or she has to play as well. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, the antagonist game was a bit too uh, all or nothing, win or lose. Yes. Um, many players would find themselves having problems progressing in the league because you would either win and get a lot of points or lose and, and lose the points. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do now is scale the points differently. You can now uh, gain stigmas e even if you lose. However, if you did a good job, killed the Raiders and made, it, uh, made them ha have a hard time, yes. pretty much, uh, you can gain stigmas. Still, if you get defeated and have a bad loss, you will still lose stigmas. But overall, uh, most people will find it easier to get themselves onto the ranks and getting a, a decent antagonist rank. Okay, yeah. Well, that's nice. This is the last change we are going to make in Riders of the Broken Planet's economy. Thank you very much, Johan, uh, for being there and you, of course, for uh, watching us. And as always, see you on the Broken Planet. <laughs>